right so this week i will be staying in the van and uh, i'm hoping it's not too chilly tonight and the place i found to stay is not too far from me now and uh, it looks a pretty nice place for the night to be honest with you Right, so we've got a bit of a problem because that sign, well, it doesn't suggest, tells me that I'm not allowed to come here for the night. But it's starting to get a little bit late and I don't know the area that well, so I'm afraid I'm gonna be, oh, I'm gonna take a bit of a chance. This is where it's gonna be and uh, well, hopefully we get through the night with no disturbances. Right, that is uh, not the news we wanted. I've just had a phone call from the golf course that we were due to visit this morning and they've canceled, which is a bit annoying and not part of the plan, a bit of a disaster really, but basically it rained overnight and we've had a lot of rain in the UK over the last couple of weeks. They were already concerned about the condition of the course and how it might appear on camera. And they've decided this morning that they just don't think that it's suitable to film on. So. I understand that, but it leaves with a problem because, uh, well, first of all, I've just slept in uh, the freezing cold for no good reason. And uh, we need to come up with a plan B for this week's episode. Yeah, I'm not really sure what we're gonna do. Right, okay, this is the plan. I've just been looking through some old footage. The idea, first of all, should we go somewhere else, but I just haven't got time to organize that today uh, and get sorted, so, I'm gonna, I filmed the video three and a half years ago when the channel was a lot smaller than what it is now. It was my, still probably one of my favorite videos that we've ever filmed and it didn't get a huge amount of views and I love it. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna rerun that video. Apologies to anyone that watched it three and a half years ago, but there'll be a lot of you that haven't seen it and it's very much in the style that we're now gone back to filming at in this recent series. So. This is my film about my golfing hero, Seve. Iconic status is granted to only a few. For some it can be in recognition of sport and achievement, but for others the title has a wider significance. In 1979, a 22-year-old Spaniard won the Open Championship at Royal Lytham St Anne's. Seve had arrived and legendary status was inevitable. Today, I walk in the footsteps of my golf hero.
And of course there'll be a challenge hole, it's going to be the infamous 16th, where effectively I reckon Seve won that Open Championship in 1979. But go and have a look around first and then join me back here for a man versus golf hole challenge. Seve's ability was unquestionable, but in many ways, it was his waywardness that provided the moments of genius. He was beyond the ordinary and brought so much imagination, charisma, style, inspiration and passion to the game. Oh. That's not the best of swings, but I found the middle of the fairway, which is the most important bit, I suppose. 170 in, it's all uphill. There's a mammoth bunker. I think it's the one left of picture. We'll have a look in there in a minute, but I'm hoping I don't go in it. But we'll uh, we'll take a stop off to have a look. But um, yeah, all uphill. So we're clubbing up a bit here, expecting it to take a bit of extra to get up that hill. Oh, do you know what? It's a decent enough shot, but I don't know whether it's got the legs, you know. Go. No, I didn't think so. Sit, stay, that's on its way back down the hill. I'm going to play this one out, I pitched somewhere around here and it was a good club short, but this is where I finished up. Massive dips uh, and, and swales here, and that bunker that I referred to is actually greenside uh, to the left, I'm going to have a look at it in a minute or two. But first of all, uh, we've got to master this, not easy. Come on, uh, do you know what? It's not bad, I think it was the right type of shot to play. Well, it was for me. I needed a little bit more to uh, make this one a little bit easier. This is one steep bunker. Um, it's gotta be, I don't know, that looks about six, seven, eight foot maybe to the top of it. I can see the tip of the flag and we need some Spanish hands. Sevi, come on. Work some magic and stick this one in the hole. It's not a bad effort, you know. Oh, Sevi. That's got to be of uh, a bit of help from above, I reckon, there. Watching any of the major golf tournaments that they've held here at Royal Lytham, I always remember this par three. It's a great little hole. And again, danger absolutely everywhere you're looking. A danger mainly being bunkers, but again, you can see all those big slopes, even from here, that they're all feeding. Um, away from the green and into one of those uh, what look like fairly deep bunkers. So question is, can I hit a decent tee shot? On a hole that I've watched on the telly many times and then you get the opportunity to do it yourself. Again, I've just got off the bottom groove. Has it got enough? Has it got enough? Sit. I was at the flag, it was a bit like I said out the bottom groove, but it's not bad. I think I might have got a subtle round of applause from the crowd, but only a subtle one. Not a bad roll. Might have got a bit of a new from the crowd. Yep, we'll make a three. The 1979 Open was brutal. Wild winds from the Irish Sea caused havoc. But on that final day, Seve managed to play the notoriously difficult back nine in genius mode and played the last seven holes in one under. I wonder what's going through Seve's mind at this time, 22 year old, and still all to play for at this stage. It was extremely tight. And don't forget the winds were howling. right on the line you know right on the line go 
happy with that. I think Seve would have been happy with that one. Difference is it was blowing a bit of a different breeze on that day. I get to play an open championship venue. You just get to experience things that we've seen on telly and you get these kind of, they're almost nondescript bunkers. You see so many of them littered around the place, but again, they're like a piece of art. Uh, stunningly maintained, but all of a sudden they pop up out of nowhere. And uh, again, that's, you know, I mean, that's not far off as sort of tall as me and up and down from here. And, and you just got so much admiration for A, the people that maintain these things, but then B, when you see the professionals and how they make this kind of thing look so easy and you get someone average that comes in and all you're thinking is, my God, I just hope this pops up. Oh, hello. That's above average. Sevi, magic hands. Spanish hands, not too shabby this place is it and it's been an absolute, in, uh, so much enjoyment to walk around but what will top it is just getting, well a par would be good, don't forget Seve birdied this so the story was he goes so far right on this tee shot, he was in the car park, the overflow car park, takes a free drop, by the way he was that far wide that Hale Irwin who he's playing with in that final round question how could he not be out of bounds, the response was he picks up an iron, he sticks it to 30 foot and rolls in that birdie. And we get that famous Seve celebration and fist pump. So that's what obviously I need to now do. Uh, we're playing a little bit blind. It's the black and white marker and um, we'll see what lies over there. But first of all, let's see what happens with the tee shot. We're a little bit further forward and we haven't got the breeze they were playing with on that day. Well, I've gone on the line, it's suggested. It's a little bit right. I don't think it's as far right as Seve went. And hopefully I can finish this off. Like I said, a par is what I'm looking for. Right, so I've got 135 in. From what I can make out from the scorecard and speaking to lads earlier, Seve was somewhere over, uh, way over to where that, it's a lot heavier apparently now than what it was, but that was the kind of area he came in from. So I found again, one more fairway than Seve did, uh, but, Let's see if uh, I can get that ball in close and roll in that birdie like he did. Into the breeze a bit. We look as though we've got a flag tucked in right behind the bunker. So do we go on the bowl line or? That's the bowl line. Come on, be right, Sevy. Be right. Ah, well. I could be just a little bit short. It seems I hang for a little while, but I reckon we've got a chance for birdie. Well, a good uh, club, almost even two clubs short uh, into that breeze. Looks like it swings off quite a bit. The flag when Seve played, it was over that other side. Um, but the result's the same. Do you know how much I want to give it that Seve fist pump? But it's a big ask, this. Come on, Seve. Come on, Seve. Come on, Seve. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, I'm happy with that for a minute. Uh, yeah, I did think I actually had a chance. Uh, and that would have been perhaps a little bit too good to be true. But I said I wanted to make par and I did. And I'm happy with that to be fair. The years pass and the dreams fade. Hopes of sport and greatness, well, they've long disappeared. But I'm desperate for a par on the 18th. A huge sigh of relief, my best drive of the day. It was only a nine and in hand, but with the green starting to shrink, I was already aware of the awaiting gallery. Slightly tentative, but so far so good. With a wonder in mind and conscious of the stare, the pressure had got to me. And yeah, I messed it up. A 
sinking feeling of failure, and then, well, thank you, Sevi. Sevi is a legend. In European golf, he is a messiah. Worshipped by fellow professionals and loved by the fans. Sevi, we miss you. So that was plan B and I, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope we get more views than we did first time around. Unfortunately, that was all we could come up with in such short notice and I'll be back on my travels again next week which uh, probably a good idea is if there are any golf courses out there that are watching this that have got a golf course they want to show off within the winter months, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with me and uh, we'll find our way to you in some way. The other thing is we took a couple of photos earlier on this morning, which uh, you can have a look at now. So if nothing else, I think I've definitely got the win this week in the photo competition. And as with last week, choose your favorite picture in the comments section below. Although I do realize these aren't the kind of photographs you're perhaps interested in. And finally, thanks to everyone again who gets involved in this comment section, particularly about this new content. I'm absolutely delighted with the way it's um, well been received. Everyone seems to love it. And uh, I just hope it seems that we made the right decision. And it's just all positivity. But you getting involved in that comment section really does matter. I can assure you that it's uh, sort of confirmation that you're all enjoying what we're doing. So comments down below, uh, even if it wasn't an ideal episode, I hope you enjoyed it. And I can assure you, I'll be on a golf course again next week. And I'll see you all soon. It's not a bad backdrop though, is it to be fair? <laughs>